Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 20th in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. So this episode we're going to be looking at um, mainly our textures and some lighting. So when we originally added in our textures, uh, let's say for these two buildings that we did quite a while ago, um, if you look at them closely you will notice that they are obviously rather flat and from a distance yes they look okay but when you get up close not so much so to make it look somewhat more uh, realistic uh, we're going to use something called a normal map so just to quickly demonstrate I'm just going to press play um, as soon as it's on I am going to turn my volume down because there is music I don't want it blasting out so if we walk up to our building it is very kind of flat. So we want to make it look as though it has kind of grooves and the reason it works with something called a normal map is mainly because of lighting but we'll get around to that in a bit. So if you go to your textures folder and click on let's say brick 001 which was probably one of the first textures we imported. If you hold control press D to duplicate it will make a duplicate of that obviously. Uh, and let's rename it, uh, so right click and um, in fact I'm just going to F2 that, uh, we'll call this brick001 underscore normal. So when it's renamed uh, make sure it's still selected and over here in your inspector pane you'll have something called texture type. If you click that, no, that uh, drop down list, the second one down should be something called normal map. Um, you want to create from grayscale, which is fine. Bumpiness, I think by default, is set to 0 0.25 and the filtering is set to sharp. I'm going to keep them as default um, just for now. Then if you go down here and click on apply, give it a couple of seconds to think about it. The texture itself will turn a kind of purple and blue colour. That is completely normal, so don't worry about that. Next thing you need to do is if you go to your materials folder and then you find that material that we've put on here, in this case it is brick uh, 001 again. If you click on that and over here you'll have the albedo, which was the actual texture itself, um, metallic and smoothness, and then here we've got normal map. Now you can either select the little button here and choose it or you can, still making sure you've got your material selected there, you can drag and drop this here. And then you'll notice this brick has changed its appearance. So once you've done that, <coughs> excuse me, you can um, play around with the normal map settings. If you hover your mouse over here, you'll end up with what appears to be like a, an invisible slider. You can move it up and down to suit how you want your, um, how, you know, how bumpy you want it to appear. So I'm going to set it to 0 0.5 for now. Um, the height map, now well, I'm not going to go into this too much, but if you were to drag and drop the um, same normal map onto the height map, it doesn't make too much of a difference unless you uh, really play with the settings you'll notice if you move that up and down you will get a little bit of a an altercation in your um, texture on the blocks themselves but for now I'm just going to remove that so if we play with a metallic we can give it a kind of real dark metallic kind of look and the smoothness <coughs> excuse me um, we can move it up and down and give it more of a look and feel of real bricks. So I'm going to do the um, exact same with this building here. So if we again in textures if we head to brick 002 control D to duplicate and then F2 to rename and let's call it brick 002 underscore normal Using the same process as last time, head over to your inspector on the um, drop down list there, select normal map and I'm going to keep defaults again for now and click on apply. 
And again, it turns to the kind of weird white, purple, and blue color. So let's head to um, the materials folder, click on brick 002. And once again, as I said, you can either select from the list using the little button there or drag and drop. I drag and dropped last time, so I'm just going to click the little button there. And in this search box, let's type in brick 002. And there it is. So now we can have a little closer look at this. If we press play and walk up to it, we can see that it does look slightly more realistic. But because of the lighting, it looks less realistic than what it could do. So I'm going to increase the metallic look of it all the way to 1. And I've dropped the smoothness down to about 0 0.17. So it still doesn't look great, but we can change that with um, our lighting. So if we go to our sun there, if you remember, I think we did this in one of the very early tutorials. We um, put our directional light on there. Um, so let's change our intensity really high. You can see everything literally turns white. Put it really low and everything turns really dark. Keep it as one, but I'm going to change the color to um, a slight yellow kind of uh, yellowy brown kind of look. And um, I think we'll keep the bounce intensity as one for now. Uh, if you go to window at the top and then go to lighting just there, the very first option, well, hopefully it should be preset to scene here. If not, just click scene in the middle. Um, you can you have your skybox just here, and I think we imported a classic skybox at one point. Um, you can click on that if you want to, but what I'm going to uh, do for this particular bit is change the ambient source. So if you go to the ambient source, you can select either skybox, gradient, or color. If we select gradient, you have uh, what appears to be three different colors which you can play around with. But I'm going to go to color. Uh, I'm going to change the ambient intensity down to, um, in fact, we'll do 0 0.2. But on the skybox, I'm actually going to remove it altogether. So if you click that little button there and select none, you'll notice these objects here that we've been playing with have now turned um, really, really dark. The reason for that is simply because they rely on, the way they are with a normal map, they rely on the light to actually display properly. So if we head back to um, window and then lighting, and if we change our ambient intensity to one, you'll see that the scene slowly gets a bit brighter. I want to change the ambient color to um, something a bit, a bit more yellowy. Give it a kind of a bit, bit of atmosphere to it. And let me see, what should we play with now? Let us put this as two. Does it make a difference? No, it doesn't make too much of a difference. So let's keep that as one. So if we go over here, hopefully you'll notice that the light from this coin is having a little bit of an effect on this building just here. So if we go to our sun and change the intensity, in fact, it's not quite working as I expected. Let's head back to window and go to lighting and let's have our skybox set back as um, default skybox. So if we type in default in there and click on default skybox, Let's change our ambient intensity down a little. And let's change our color a little bit darker. And let me see, should we get rid of our sun or should we change it? Let's try changing our sun from a directional to a point light. Okay, so that does make a little bit of a difference. Uh, let's try disabling it and see what happens. Not a lot, really. So if we head back to window and lighting. 
change our color a bit lighter about there and let's have the ambient intensity as one okay and let's press play let's see how that looks now okay so it's slowly looking a little bit better I don't really have the time within these tutorials to um, mess around too much with how it looks but you can certainly take the time to play around with lighting to play around with your normal maps the bumpiness of them and try and get them to look as nice as possible um, if we go to our coin if you remember I think we played around with the metallic uh, look and feel back when we did the coin um, what textures do we have out of interest um, so let's just do this for example and see what the coins end up looking like now so if we take for example our dirt 001 and drop it into our coin in the inspector on the albedo it gives them a bit of a, a different look if we change the smoothness a little and change the metallic down a touch I'm not convinced how they look I think next episode we might play around with our coins a little more to give them a bit more of a, a coin look rather than just a yellow material on them um, fence here if you remember we imported this fence um, into I think it was object we brought it into wasn't it yes fence uh, textures you could probably do the same with these in fact I think it already has a normal map in it so what quickly undo before uh, we finish this tutorial is we're going to play around with the normal map that was already brought in with our fence so if you head to materials and click on that material you'll note I, oh, let's say the normal map isn't there so let's drag and drop our normal map onto our fence and hopefully you should see the fence looks a little bit more fancy now. So I'm going to drag that up. Uh, to, let's, about five looks right. So let's take five in there and take a look at our fence. So it looks a bit more sort of decrepit now, a bit more fitting towards our scene. Um, so the same can also apply for this village over here. Although, I suspect we probably won't need to really play around with the normal maps on these. They look pretty decent as they are. Um, let's have a quick look at our textures. Okay, so, yeah, we won't bother with the normal maps on them. They look uh, okay for now. Okay, so, um, how long have we been going this tutorial now? Um, 13, 14 minutes? Okay, um, so quickly before we go, in uh, the next episode we're going to look at um, kind of a, a fade screen. So when we start up our game, rather than it just appear, I'd like it to fade into the game like it would in a normal game. So before we, get, uh, before we end this tutorial, let's quickly set up that to give ourselves a head start in the next one. Um, so if you go to Game Object, uh, go to UI, and raw image. Um, right click, rename, let's call this raw image um, full black. Now this one will be displayed as complete black over our screen. So if we go dead center, uh, change the color down here, change it to black, and what happens? I'm not sure if it's actually stretched full screen. No, it's just a little block over there. So we will double click and let's get ourselves in a bit of a better position and drag the black over the whole screen. So logically, when we press play now, it's all black. Uh, this coin's here. Um, I think we're going to get rid of this because pretty soon we're going to start building an inventory. So we won't have this up here but the main process what we're going to do next episode is allow this black screen to fade so as then we actually see our game properly 
uh, will require a little bit of scripting, but it's not too difficult. So yeah, until next episode, um, play around with your normal mats, play around with your lighting, get it looking exactly how you want. Um, the colour of your lighting always makes things a bit more atmospheric. So as you can see, we've got a kind of a, a darker look and feel. And I feel that that now kind of reflects our title screen a little more. Let me save that. So our title screen gives the impression that our game is very dark and atmospheric. And now because we've played around with our lighting and we've allowed our normal maps to be influenced by that lighting here, it looks more atmospheric. So, um, yeah, until next episode, thank you very much for watching.